Hi everyone, it's Carrie coming at you today, comic book style. This earlier this week we had uh, Star Wars Day on May the fourth. Be with you. The next day, as you know, some people call it Cinco de Mayo, but in Geek Land it's clearly known as Revenge of the Fifth. This weekend, a good friend of mine has invited us to her son's birthday party and it is going to be superhero themed and so of course the Millers are very excited about that I think we're rolling Batman style this time um, my husband's favorite comic book character but it's got me thinking about geekiness and you know the Millers were we walk on the geek side of life uh, although truth be told it's really my husband Tyler who takes the cake as the geek in our home he is the one who uh, came to the marriage with, you know, collections of comic books and uh, superhero figurines and all all that kind of stuff. He kind of recruited me to an appreciation of geek culture, though I do have to add that I have not fully converted. And the difference between me and a true blue geek would be the element of obsession. I don't possess that, at least not about, like, stuff um, or you know like characters and things like that like I like things I just you know I'm not gonna plaster David Tennant on my wall more than likely but anyway um, this reminds me of my own experience with comic books which up until just a few years ago was pretty much non-existent and the very first year we attended Comic-Con as a family on vacation, uh, which we did for three years in a row, um, there was a really special experience I got to have. I got to be a part of a documentary by one of Tyler's friends named Miguel. And he was shooting a documentary about comic books and about appreciating the art form. And he wanted specifically... Uh, to take someone who was not interested in comic books, enter me, and try and get them interested in comic books. And so uh, he asked me if I'd be willing to do a reading assignment during the course of the week there, and if he could do it like a before interview and then an after interview. And so I agreed and thought, okay, he's barking up the wrong tree because comic books are just not interesting to me. I admit I was coming in as a bit of a literature snob. Um, not appreciating the art form or seeing it as legitimate literature. That was my entrance opinion, so don't judge too harshly. <laughs> but um, I was quickly humbled, I will say. He did the, the before interview and then marched me over to this place on the floor of Comic-Con where they had, you know, all kinds of comic books and graphic novels, which was a term I was completely unfamiliar with before that year. And he picked something off the shelf and just kind of blew my mind uh, with how he intuitively picked something that would be so intensely interesting to me. And it was by a graphic um, novelist named Carol Tyler. And she wrote an autobiographical graphic novel about her relationship with her father, who was a World War II veteran and uh, very emotionally distant, emotionally closed off throughout her life, and which was very typical for that generation, but also for war veterans especially. And so it's her journey of getting kind of closer to her father and uncovering some of the things that he experienced in the war and how that translated into her relationships with her daughters and then also some of her parents history and you know when I first started reading this graphic novel I was tripping over the format a little bit it was kind of hard for me to figure that out I wasn't really used to reading comic books but eventually I just really got sucked into the story and um and then I also just had to step back and appreciate how the two different media were working together. This artist was clearly uh, extremely talented at drawing, um, but then also how she blended that with the writing to make an effective story was really intriguing to me, and it kind of forced me to rethink some of my prior prejudices. So in the after interview, when I was meeting with Miguel, 
and talking about that, um, he did something really cool. He walked me over to the floor again and actually introduced me to Carol Tyler. I got to meet her, I got to shake her hand, I got to talk with her about her graphic novel. And then at the end of that exchange, which was just, uh, it was an incredible experience to look this woman in the eye because now I feel like part of her story, I've read it, you know, I've touched it in a sense. And then she gifted me with the second installment of her book and autographed it and everything. It was an incredible experience. And I think was in no small part um, responsible for cementing a love for Comic-Con in general. It was a really great experience. And so we went the following two years and had a lot of fun. Last year we missed because I just had a baby. And this year we're not sure if we're going to be able to go or not. We have tickets. So I'm hoping that it works out because that would be really sad. We've come a long way from you're taking us where to I, I hope we don't miss. Um, it's a great time. And so anyway, in honor of Star Wars Day and geekiness galore, here's my story and my ode to geek culture and comic books and Comic-Con. Signing off.